So we've been out on Yukon Bean today. We've caught some really nice sized fish and I'm gonna show you how to do trout three ways. Yes, we're fancy out here. We do trout three ways, not just one, not two, but three. Now I've just filleted this kind of nice two pound jack. Whoop. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> and I've gotten some really nice sized fillets off that one. Now what I'm gonna do with these, one of them I'm gonna smoke and one of them I'm gonna do a ceviche. I've got another smaller fish and I'm gonna butterfly and keep whole. I'm gonna show you how to butterfly it and I'm gonna show you one of the best ways to cook it. It doesn't really take much imagination to guess that these fish might be eating yabbies. Now yabbies are a super important food source and they're one of the main things a fish are eating this time of year. It gives you a right idea of what size fly and what profile and areas you might wanna fish. So the only fish I ever keep are lake fish. One, it's more sustainable. You're taking less fish out of a river system. The other thing, they taste a lot better. River fish don't taste like much because they don't get to have the same diet that lake fish have, rich in those yabbies that I was showing you before and other freshwater crustaceans, which just aren't as prevalent in rivers. If I'm gonna keep a fish, it's a lake fish of about a pound or two. Any bigger I put back, any smaller I put back, and to be honest, I probably keep one about a month. <laughs> it's a bit of a treat, you know. I don't like to kill too many trout. They're too much of a spirit animal for me to knock that many of them. So I'm turning this trout into ceviche, or as the Spanish would say, ceviche. So if you do want to look up a video on filleting fish or skinning them, probably better to find one online. You can roll with mine, but you know, we're learning together. That's what it's all about, you know. I don't think I've had a bad fish ceviche. As long as it's fresh, then you know it's going to be good. We caught this bad boy two hours ago, so it's pretty fresh. Now I've got a lot of different knives here. When you're dealing with fish, a short filleting knife like that is great. Butcher's knife, big 10 inch butcher's knife is fantastic as well. I love my chef's knife, that's awesome. Also really handy sometimes just to cleaver it up. And when you do it, you need to yell, Hey, son! Works better that way. I never bother scaling trout. And sometimes you can just cook it nice and hot like we're going to with a butterfly fish later on and eat the skin with the scales on. Scales are small enough on a trout not to worry about them unless you're gonna eat it raw. Then you wanna get rid of the scales and the skin. Ceviche is not necessarily raw, of course. It's actually the acid that is gonna cook the fish. In this case, we're gonna use lime juice. Nice long strips like that. And you can see how beautiful and orange this flesh is. It's also got a little bit of dirt on it from where I dropped it in our bush kitchen earlier. Um, but you know, sashimi sized slices, even thinner if you can. You don't want them paper thin. You still want them to be chunky enough to have a little bit of bite to them. There it goes. We're getting a pretty sweet pile of trout here. It's a technical term, a pile. Once you've got your pile assembled. So we're gonna chuck our pile of fish into a bowl, a Tupperware container works out really well if you remember one of those on your camping trip. Fresh lime juice is best, but you know, sometimes it's hard to get limes at 1200 meters altitude. So uh, we're settling for the finest zesty lime juice. To be honest, bit of lime juice, lemon juice, anything with acid in it will do you good ceviche. You can give it a bit of a toss around, cover that, stick it in your Yeti, or chuck it in the fridge. Cool, ceviche is in the fridge. Now it's also along in the fridge with the other side of that fillet, which I've just rubbed down with a bit of brown sugar and salt. It's gonna cure up nicely for a smoke later that we're gonna do on the snow peak. Now I'm gonna butterfly this smaller trout. So I'm gonna keep it whole, keep the skin on, keep it as one piece. And it's gonna grill up really nicely on that bad boy. I'll show you guys how to butterfly a trout. It's a great way to do it. Basically it just turns it into a trout steak. It's uh, I think probably one of the best things that I've ever learned from anyone. And yeah, we'll get in and give it my version, which is, you know, it's gonna get the job done. <laughs> now, we're gonna wanna take a really sharp knife, really strong knife and run it from the spine at the head as close as I can down that spine, cracking the ribs as I go. I've also stitched myself up. You know, I wanted to make this a little bit harder so I just lit the snow peak right next to where I'm cooking to make sure I'm breathing in as much smoke as possible whilst trying to do a cooking show. And we're gonna run that all the way down to the tail. And you don't wanna cut through the skin on the other side because that skin's gonna crisp up really nicely. And we're gonna do the other side. 
The idea of this is that we're just gonna remove the spine and the rib bones from the fish, but leave the rest intact. And I mean, to be honest, you don't ever need to waste anything because you can take all of these fish bones, cook them up, use them for stock. I mean, to be honest, you could bury them in the garden and then they're gonna go back into your tomatoes. And I'm gonna clip that spine and then run back up all the way back to the head. It's gonna be a little easier for what I'm doing just to clip that head off. And I mean, that's what you end up with. Very little waste in there. There's still a little bit of meat and a lot of flavor in that. Um, I've got a very fancy chef friend who smokes these off and turns them into a delicious chowder. You've got a lot of options with that. I mean, something like that you never wanna waste. You always wanna make everything that you can of an animal. Now you notice I've got this down on some paper towel. It just helps grab the board a bit more and gives me a bit more traction, especially for this part, which can be a little bit tricky. We're gonna remove the rib bones here. Now to start off, you always wanna cut away from you. We wanna get in nice and tight to the very top of those rib bones and just inch the knife along slowly. You never wanna do any of this in a soaring motion, just push it. You just wanna free those bones up. And if you push up against the bones, you're not gonna cut away a lot of meat. You're just gonna cut away the bone and the membrane holding it in. You wanna be able to see your knife really clearly through there. Take your time too. No one's ever in a rush doing this sort of thing. The more you rush, the more you waste. And then you should be able to pull the bones out just like that. And that can go in your chowder pot too. Now, that is an awesomely butterfly trout. The only thing I'm gonna do is just get rid of a couple of different little fins. Got a pet kookaburra that likes those. See, having this knife is key. Confidence and yelling at it, I find, are the keys. It's a lot like fishing. I scream at fish all day and I have a lot of confidence I'm gonna catch them. Hi, son! So now we've ended up with a beautiful butterfly trout. There's still a few pin bones in there, which if you wanted to be really pedantic, you could go through and pick out with tweezers. But to be honest, I'm eating this and I know where they are. So I'm just gonna fry it up and eat it. <laughs> now we're gonna grill this one up on the snow peak. I'm gonna do a separate bit of a sauce to go with it, but I'll show you guys how it all comes together. I think I'm just gonna have a beer and wait for that fire to die down a bit. If you're just cooking, you very rarely need a really big fire. Just some nice low burning coals, and then you can adjust this as you need it. As you can tell, breathing on a fire to try and get it going is Slightly disturbing. You're breathing a lot of smoke, it takes time. It's the best thing about being a pack rafter is that I've always got one of these on me, it's handy. You've got 101 uses for this little pump. Perfect, that baby's roaring. What we're gonna do is get, some would say a generous knob of butter into that pan. and then straight in with a good amount of garlic. Don't muck around. When you've only got two ingredients in your sauce, may as well put a lot in. Get our expertly butterfly trout from earlier. Dunk that in. And get it straight on the coals. Whoosh! Nice! Skin side down first. It's not gonna take long, especially once you've dumped this sauce on it. A little bit of pepper on the flesh side. A little bit of salt too. Trout, obviously, being a freshwater fish, go to town, get some sodium on there. Now, flipping fish is an art form. Um, best done like fishing with confidence. I'm gonna put it back in our pan from before and just keep it just off the heat. You don't need to be worried about undercooking it. You wanna be worried about overcooking it. Cause otherwise my mum will hit you with a wooden spoon. Ooh. 
Perfect. All right. Gonna give this grill a quick clean. We're gonna get ready for stage two. I don't actually want that much fire here because we're at the perfect heat for smoking. Now, when you're smoking fish over an open flame, you're hot smoking it. It's not gonna take very long. The key here is gonna be, this is a bit of a mix of, uh, I wanna say wood chips. <laughs> we wanna get that on, really smother that up. Grill back on. We're gonna put our side skin down again. That's the side we filleted before. And then, just with a baking tray, voila, you've got yourself a smoker. <coughs> Somewhat of a smoky smoker, but that's the point. <laughs> now the one thing to watch out for when you're doing the old bush rig smoker is extra flame. One thing these snow peaks do is breathe really well as a grill. So as a jury rig smoker, you know, they're gonna get the job done, especially for hot smoking, but you do wanna make sure you don't get any big flare ups. If it looks like it, just smother it with a few more chips. Okay, we're gonna see how our uh, slightly improvised snow peak smoker is going. Smells good. And looks pretty good, actually. Definitely grill slash smoked, but whew, I think that'll have some really nice flavor to it. I'm actually quite happy with that. <laughs> Try out three ways. So there we have it guys, trout three ways. We've got ceviche here, which to be honest, would love a bit of a garnish with some red onions and some parsley. Once again, try and get those at the Adamitibi General Store. I dare you. Mmm, perfect. You want to have a little bit of bite? That lime's just cooked it through perfectly. Now, here we have the butterfly trout that we've done with the garlic and butter sauce. We've left the skin on, we've got it nice and crispy. You know, if you're gonna have a bite, have a big bite. Ooh, pardon. on. That's actually really good. I'm genuinely shocked that I cooked that. And then finally, we've got the jury rig smoke trout. Still warm. I mean, it's very rare that you nail it, but Quite confident I did. Ceviche, pan fried and smoked, all on Snow Peak, all called sustainably at Lake Eucamine. Here she's filling up. And uh, you know, one of the best ways to enjoy your ceviche is with everyone's favorite shapes. Um, just dig in there. Next time you jump on the boat, throw some lime and some shapes on board. I mean, it's not caught on blur, but it's good, you know. See you guys.